Flow class. Of course, this is IS-303, and I'm going to do a short review of Case 2, Recorded Future, and we'll do an introduction to Case 3, which is going to be Drummond Company. Let's first take a look at what we should have learned from Recorded Future. Of course, that case was all about collecting data and how that can provide a strategic competitive advantage for companies. We also learned about some various methods and tools for mining and analyzing this data. And of course, in this case, we looked at how Recorded Future use this data and these tools to make predictions. One of your case questions was pretty much what you thought the future of the ability to make these predictions would be. Um, for example, we would be able to predict all major political events. We would be able to prevent crimes. Um, etc. And the truth is, nobody knows for sure. It's pretty much a given that the more data that you're able to collect and analyze, uh, particularly from social media platforms where you are analyzing unstructured data, that the more accurately you would be able to make these predictions. So I hope everyone enjoyed that case. Now our next case is Telecommunications Drummond Corporation establishing telecommunications to Columbia. And in this case, we're going to look at the best option for connecting Drummond operations in the United States to those outside the country. In this case, you will rely on the knowledge and principles that are presented in Chapter 13 of the text to be able to do your case analysis. Let's take a look at Drummond's, and you can go and look at them at www.drummondco.com. They are in the industry of coal mining. They have operations in the U.S. They also have operations in Columbia, South America. They actually have a coking plant in Tarrant, Alabama. And that's just north of Birmingham. A lot of you may know exactly where that is. As more of a sideline, they own some various pieces of real estate. In Birmingham, it's the old Overton slash Liberty Park. In Lakeland, Florida, it's Grasslands Golf and Country Club. And in La Quinta, California, it's the Rancho La Quinta and Andalusia slash Coral Mountain. But again, their primary industry is coal mining. There's some interesting facts about Drummond. And a lot of times when you hear coal mining, you think of underground uh, mines. The majority of Drummond's operations, however, um, are performed by what's called strip mining, where they strip layers of the earth uh, and separate the coal from it. Now, Drummond annually moves two and a half times the amount of dirt that it took to excavate the Panama Canal. To, to do this, they use what's called a drag line. I have, um, I have posted the PowerPoint up to Canvas as it contains uh, several pictures 
uh, depicting some of this stuff. Drummond actually had operations very close to where I lived at one time. I have actually walked up to a drag line and it will make you feel very, very small standing beside it. A drag line weighs 13 million pounds. Its boom is 325 feet. The bucket on it moves 120 yards of material with each scoop, and this is approximately 32 tons. To put this in perspective, a fully loaded 18-wheeler carries approximately 40 tons. Electricity, it takes 25,000 volts to operate it, and the expense to Drummond to operate a drag line is $60,000 per month. But let's take a look at their beginnings. Drummond was actually started by Mr. Drummond in 1935. He put up three mules as collateral and borrowed $300 to start this company. Now today, and by today, this was as of December 2013, Drummond had revenues of $3 billion annually. They are, of course, in the utilities industry. Uh, their CEO at that time was Gary Drummond. They employed approximately 6,600 people. Now, their headquarters are here in Birmingham, Alabama. And you'll notice here they are number 160 on America, uh, Forbes list of America's largest private companies. Drummond is still a privately held company. Now, Drummond also has some international operations in Columbia, South America. They have multiple large open pit mines. They have a budgeted production of 30 million tons per year. And this is a map showing you from Birmingham to Columbia. It just shows you about where it is, which if you went just in a straight line, would be approximately 1,860 miles. Now the problems um, that they encounter with their operations in Columbia is First of all, it is a third world country, so there are language barriers. Colombia has limited infrastructure. They have to deal with governmental burdens in the form of licensing and taxes. There is a growing user population and a growing demand for services such as email, ERP, and web. So, what if you were the person responsible for connecting all of these sites, the mines in Columbia to the port in Columbia to the headquarters in Birmingham? How would you do it? What vendors would you involve? What governmental considerations might there be? What physical considerations will you have to take into account? And what would you use for the infrastructure endpoints? And again, I will post this PowerPoint and you'll be able to click on this link. This is undersea cable map and it will show you a, a mapping of the undersea um, fiber optic cables. Now, <coughs> In your case instructions, you're going to see this table. This is, notice this is as of 2005. Your first row is Drummond's needs at that time. At that time, they budgeted $20,000 monthly. 
their time frame is immediate. They, they need this immediately. The availability right here will tell you what capabilities they're looking for. The facts of the case will tell you exactly what it is they're wanting to accomplish. The reliability, they need it to be good to excellent and they need a speed of at least 512 kilobits per second. Now the other four rows is simply showing you some options or, that are available. Uh, there are satellite communications that cost $16,000 a month. They're available immediately. They are existing. Their reliability is excellent and it provides speeds of 512 kilobits per second. And then you've got existing fiber optic cables, you've got T1E1 carriers, and you've got new undersea telecom cable. And so all of the information on the costs, the time frames, the availability, the reliability, and the speed are on this table. So the question is, how would you propose to connect, make the necessary connections that Drummond wants and accomplish what they're wanting to accomplish? And again, you can find this, this will be set out in the case. Here are some potential answers. A, in partnership with the Colombian phone company, they could run an undersea cable to the United States. They could use the cable for drumming and sell the excess bandwidth. Um, they could establish VoIP communications to the Birmingham office and run a drumming down fiber optic cable between the port and the mine. B, they could make arrangements to have access to one of the expensive and rare already existing fiber optic cables back to the U.S. And you can read the rest of this. C, they could acquire a data channel on a satellite for communications between Birmingham and the mine and then acquire a second satellite data channel for communications between the mine and the port. Or D, you can craft your own answer. But basically what you're going to need to do is to look at these potential choices, look at what the cost would be, the time frame, the availability, reliability, and speed, and weigh that against Drummond's needs. So basically you're putting yourself in the position of being the person that has to propose the best way to connect all of these sites and accomplish um, or fulfill Drummond's needs at this point in time. Now that's basically your first question. For your second question, you're going to have another table, an updated table, um, talking about the availability of service today. And of course that's as of the time the case is written. So again, the first row is Drummond's needs. They've upgraded the monthly budget. There's a little bit more flexibility in the time frame. Again, the case will have more detailed facts on what it is that they're actually needing. Um, they need excellent reliability. And now they need speeds of at least 6 megabits per second. And again, you have your options listed in the subsequent rows with their costs, time frames, availability, reliability, and speed. So again, you're in the position of having to propose the best way to accomplish what they're needing to accomplish now. And here's some potential answers. A, they could partner with in-country telecom providers to provide robust communications capabilities for all three sites. Um, B it would be to take a mixed strategy. C would be developing strong ties with in-country communications providers. D 
acquire advanced bandwidth on satellites. Or E, you can craft your own solution. Again, you'll refer to your table to make sure that what it is you're proposing meets their needs, their time frame, their budget, and all of that. Now, as I said, you'll rely heavily on the information that you uh, read in Chapter 13. You're going to obviously need to understand uh, what all of this is talking about. You need to understand VoIP. You need to understand what it means to backhaul. You need to understand what terrestrial links are. You need to understand what a network topology is. And of course, you're also going to need to understand what a T1E1 carrier is, what fiber optic cables are, what satellite communications are, all of those things. And all of that, you'll cover all of that information in Chapter 13. Now, this is just um, a little bit of information. Uh, as to what they've done today, uh, showing here the satellite, the MPLS, make sure that you understand the MPLS and that MPLS circuits are redundant via their routing. Um, shows you the internet service at the mine, the port in the United States. Uh, how the bandwidth is managed, what they're doing, how they're using their bandwidth. You'll notice in the case they want to have full motion video capabilities and their data usages. Here, this is just a map showing AT&T, DSL, and Verizon uh, availabilities. And you can refer to this in the PowerPoint itself. Bandwidth, uh, this slide just gives you some information on bandwidth and the various conversions uh, so that you understand better exactly what their needs are. Here are some cost um, figures from Sprint and AT&T at various points in time. And at the conclusion of this case, you should understand that no matter what you think, or how hard you try, there will always be something more to be done. I mean, your first proposal is going to be to meet their needs in 2005, but then as you can see in your second question, there's been quite a few changes. And so the same thing that you proposed back in 2005 may or may not work in 2013. And the bottom line is there is no such thing as a static network. Just as technology continues to evolve um, an organization's telecommunications needs evolve, as well as the options uh, to fulfill those needs. Now, our question time, and please disregard the August 1st at 7 p.m. Uh, on this slide. Our question time will be, as usual, Monday night, 6 p.m., via the virtual classroom. So bring your questions, and I hope to see everyone there. Thank you.